Hello everyone, and today we are taking a closer look at the EE84 signal lamp. So this is a signal lamp which is designed to transmit blinker code by day and night, and when I say blinker code, I mean of course Morse code. The whole set weighs about 19 kilos, and it has a range about 4.5 kilometers in the sunlight. The range is of course longer at night time, and you can use red or white flashes, but when you are using the red flashes, the range is cut in half. And for directing the light beam, there is a telescopic sight on top of the lamp. The mount that you see here is complete with leveling bulb, micrometer scale and compass. And the tripod can also be used with the M65 telescope, as you can see here. So, signal lamps like the EE84 is mainly used by field and coast artillery units. But during World War II, it seems like signal lamps like the EE84 was mostly used by what is known as shore party, also known as beach master units, during amphibious operations. The shore party is responsible for ship to shore communications and they also coordinate all of the logistics on the beach. So back in the first world war, field telephones were pretty reliable, but lines were vulnerable to enemy artillery fire, and enemy patrols could also cut the telephone lines. Radio technology was still in its infancy during the First World War, so the use of radio by ground troops in forward positions was not practical. So therefore the forward artillery observer often used visual signals, like semaphore flags and signal lights. So in the Field Artillery Journal from 1941 they were working on a new signal lamp, and it seems like the EE84 was comparatively new around 1947 because there is a description of the EE-84 in the Coastal Artillery Journal from November 1937. It was hoped that the EE-84 would prove to be suitable as a replacement for two or more types of signal lamps. It was found that it was suitable for only signaling between fixed stations on the ground. The Coast Artillery had adequate signal equipment for communicating between fixed stations on the ground, so the Coast Artillery recommended against the standardization of the EE-84, and they recommended efforts to be continued to develop an all-purpose signal lamp. So during training exercises for the D-Day invasion in Normandy, the US Rangers often encountered radio problems between them and the Navy. The communications officer James Eichner in the Rangers got two EE-84 signal lamps in case his radios failed during the D-Day attack. So when the rangers attacked the German position at Point de Hoc on D-Day, Eichner and his men had initial radio communication problems between them and the navy. So when the rangers had taken Point de Hoc, they had only one EE-84 because the other one was lost when a supply boat sunk under the attack. So with only one EE-84, Eichner and his men were able to maintain communication with the navy and were therefore able to adjust naval gunfire. And here is a picture of Lieutenant Colonel James Earl Ruder at Point the Hook. And behind him is the EE-84. So in a study of field artillery communications in World War II, it says, Semaphore flags and signal lamps were used so sheltered that they practically disappeared. I managed to find one drawing of it in the Forward Observer Field Manual from 1944, but other than that, it's not mentioned at all. But anyway, it's a really cool item, even though it's a little bit expensive. 